In today's video, we're going to be continuing our evidence-based learning series by looking at how you can learn faster and retain information for longer using spaced repetition. If you've not yet watched the video on active recall, check it out first so you understand how both methods work together. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Alex, and on this channel, we focus on human performance to help you live healthier, wealthier, happier, and more productive lives. Now, despite having graduated from med school in 2009, I can still remember a ton of medical facts and anatomical knowledge in a huge amount of detail because I learned it over a long period of time. Whether you're studying for an exam or learning a new language, you want to ensure that you're maximizing your time and learning as efficiently as possible to get the maximum benefit from your time spent learning. Spaced repetition is the process of testing material over progressively longer intervals in order to increase the effort of recall and thus embed knowledge further into your long-term memory. By spacing study sessions out, more information is encoded into long-term memory than by cramming in sessions, even if you spend fewer actual hours studying. Now, breaking up your study time can also allow for other activities and help you to maintain a healthy lifestyle while studying. When combined with active recall, spaced repetition can help you remember things for longer and in less time. So today, we're gonna to understand the science behind why we remember or forget things, understand how spaced repetition works, learn about the best spaced repetition intervals to use, learn about the best spaced repetition systems to use, and finally, look at some practical ways to start using spaced repetition to learn things better. Now the human brain has around 86 billion nerve cells called neurons, which are fundamental building blocks of the brain. When we acquire new knowledge of any kind, neurons and the synapses that connect them become more strongly connected, which creates a stronger network and allows the neurons to communicate with each other faster and more efficiently. As you recall information, these connected neurons and synapses become stronger, making things easier to remember. The more and stronger the neural connections you develop, the better you have learned something. In the late 1880s, psychologist Hermann Ebinghaus became the first person to systematically tackle the analysis of memory. And he did this by spending years memorizing lists of nonsensical syllables that he just made up. By meticulously recording his results, how many times he studied each list, the time intervals between his study sessions, and how much he was able to remember, Ebinghaus was able to chart the rate at which memories decay over time. He showed this rate of decay in a graph called the forgetting curve. Ebinghaus published Memory, a Contribution of Experimental Psychology in 1885 and hypothesized that the speed of forgetting depends on a number of factors, such as the difficulty of the learned material, for example, how meaningful it is, its representation and other physiological factors, such as stress and sleep. He further hypothesized that the base forgetting rate differs little between individuals. Ebinghaus asserted that the best methods for increasing the strength of memory are, firstly, better memory representation, for example, with mnemonics and advanced memory techniques, and secondly, repetition based on active recall, especially spaced repetition. As Ebinghaus himself put it, with any considerable number of repetitions, a suitable distribution of them over a space of time is decidedly more advantageous than the massing of them at a single time. So don't cram and space out your revision. In his book, How We Learn, memory expert Benedict Carey states, some amount of breakdown must occur for us to strengthen learning when we revisit learning material. Without a little forgetting, you get no benefit from further study. It is what allows memories to build like an exercise muscle. In other words, memories are strengthened by things we encounter regularly and frequently. This is also why spaced repetition works so well. By repeating new information at the point when we start to forget it, spaced repetition forces your brain to improve the connection between nerve cells. Ebinghaus's premise was that each repetition in learning increases the optimum interval before the next repetition is needed. For near-perfect retention, initial repetitions may need to be made within days, but later they can be made after years. He discovered that information is easier to recall when it's built upon things you already know, and the forgetting curve was flattened by every repetition. It appeared that by applying frequent training in learning, the information was solidified by repeated recalling. By testing students at progressively longer intervals, spaced repetition allows some forgetting to set in, 
This means the effort students have to apply to recall material in each testing session is significant, leading to deeper and more durable learning. Interrupting the process of forgetting is the most effective way to cement knowledge in long-term memory. A word learning experiment illustrates some of these key points about retrieval-based learning. In the experiment from Karpik et al. in 2011, students learned a list of foreign language words across cycles of study and recall trials. In study trials, the students saw a vocabulary word and its translation on the computer screen. And in recall trials, they saw a vocabulary word and had to recall and type its translation. The key question in this research was, how well would students remember the vocabulary word translations in the long term? Merely studying the words once without ever recalling them produced extremely poor performance. An average recall was only 1%. Practicing until each translation was recalled was much better. Mass retrieval, or repeating the translations three times immediately after learning, produced no additional gain in learning. However, repeated retrieval enhanced learning only when the repetitions were spaced. And indeed, the effects of repeated spaced retrieval were very large. So now we know that spacing study sessions is the most effective way to learn, let's look at what the most optimal spacing schedule is and how we can practically implement this to our studying. In 2008, psychology researchers at the University of California examined a large cohort of 1,354 subjects who were tasked with recalling 32 trivia facts using different spaced repetition schedules. Their research of 26 space study schedules concluded that no absolute study interval exists, but rather how long the learner wishes to retain the information for dictates the first study gap. From their research, they found that the optimal first study gap declines as a percentage of the time to the test. For example, if the test is in a week, the gap should be 20 to 40% or one to two days. If the test is in six months, it should be 10 to 20%, so around three to five weeks. As we know from the forgetting curve and work of Ebinghaus, you want to space things out and remind yourself on multiple occasions with intervals increasing in size to maximize effort and recall each time. For most students, exams will likely be one to six months away, so you'll be working with study gaps of one to three weeks generally. For a test or exam a few months away, your spaced repetition schedule might look a little bit like this. Your original day of learning is day zero. Your first repetition happens after two days. Your second repetition happens after 10 days the third repetition after 30 days, and your fourth after 60 days. The gap between each repetition gets progressively longer, two, eight, 20, 30, as per Ebinghaus's research. But as we know from the same research, the best methods for increasing the strength of memory are better memory representation, and secondly, repetition based on active recall. While point two is covered by the spacing intervals, we also need to consider just how well we know the topic to begin with, to give us the best chance of embedding it in our long-term memory. In line with the forgetting curve and memorization, if you are unable to recall certain facts, you'll need to actively recall them more frequently. And equally, facts that you have embedded already should have longer spaced intervals. Language company Pimsleur adopted spaced repetition for learning languages to great effect. And both they and German science journalist Sebastian Leitner developed spaced repetition systems that organized learning materials around ease of recall setting spacing intervals based on whether the learner is able to recall the fact. This is best visually represented by the Leitner system, where correctly answered cards are advanced to the next, less frequent box, while incorrectly answered cards are returned to the first box or the preceding box. Each box then carries a spacing interval, with better known cards in box five having the longest interval, and cards that have been mastered, so answered correctly five times in a row, are removed from the card circulation. This system can be digitized and automated or followed manually using an Excel spreadsheet. So let's look at how to practically apply spacing to your own learning. A quick and easy way to integrate spacing into your studying is to use Excel or Google Sheets. I've included a link to a free Google Sheets spacing template that can be accessed via the link in the description, or you can create your own one yourself simply by listing the topics you're learning and then setting review or repetition dates based on your desired spacing schedule and number of repetitions. You can then use a traffic light system to highlight how well you know the topic on the recall days and adjust the spacing interval as needed in a similar way to the Leitner system. You will want to decide how long you have until your test or how long you want to recall the information for and then decide whether you want to use a digital learning system 
or a handwritten flashcard or note system. Some good automated digital learning systems include Anki flashcards, Super Memo and Chicken, all of which have spaced repetition built in and will allow you to jump in and practice active recall of topics to maximize learning effectiveness. So give it a try and let me know if you improved your learning. If you enjoyed this video, we've added in some links to other videos you might find useful. And if you have any suggestions for future topics you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time.